What's going on, guys? I'm Barry Gito. I'm here with Rampage Jackson. We have a very special guest, but before we jump into the Jackson podcast, I just want to let you guys know we are still running one of the biggest sales of the year, up to 50% off site wide, all real gold, real silver chains made in Italy. We have bracelets, we have chains, we have pendants, we have rings, everything you need. It makes the perfect gift. And if you guys are looking for the special limited edition clothing, hats, eyewear, luggage that we sell, it's on a special website now, club.jackson.com. You can use the promo code BFCLUB25 for 25% off site wide. And you can wear all the clothing that you've been seeing me and Rampage wear. Now that he looks like a model, I'm sure you've seen a lot more uh, pieces on him than you see on me. But today he's camouflaged, so hopefully you guys can see him in general. And we're going to jump right into this. Rampage, what do we got? Man, we got uh, Josh CCO Emmett up in this motherfucker. It was great to be here, you guys. Man, hey, hey, you know what? Couple, couple, uh, what? Like a week or so ago, I ain't recognize you. I didn't know who you was, but I'm glad I know you now. <laughs> I saw you knock a motherfucker out. I appreciate it. No, that's that's. Uh, Bear was telling me he's like, "Have you seen our clips?" My best friend sent me a clip. He's like, "Rampage didn't even know who you were." You, he was watching your guys watching me, me my fight, and then uh, he's like, "Who's this guy?" So I was going to fuck with you today. I was going to come here and be like, how long have you been in this industry? You've just been uh, doing interviews all day, but I beat you how too. can I do that? Because yeah. you're a legend, pioneer nah. of the sport. I've been a huge fan since man, since I got in the game. Man, I'm I'm going to tell you now, it's it's nothing personal, but it's just like um, I haven't been watching a whole lot. Now I've just been watching the guys that you know I used to fight with and that I know, like all the all the, the newer cats. How long have you been in the UFC? I'm coming up on eight years. In God the, damn, in the eight years! That, that's why I'm like, how do you not know? I, I don't be, I don't be watching it like <laughs> okay. that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's messed up. But now that I'm um, doing this podcast stuff with Bear, now I'm watching it more. Yeah. But um, when you've been fighting as long as I have, man, it's like when the UFC started doing so many shows and stuff. I was like, man, they doing too much. Yeah. They doing too many shows. So I thought that. Uh, um, uh, MMA was going to die out like kickboxing PKA did yeah. back in the day, and I was I was afraid of that, like the sport I love. But uh, I'm gonna keep it 100. Like um, I'm not gonna say no names, but somebody, one promoter out there did kind of steal the love mm -hmm. of, of fighting from me, and so I kind of like stopped watching it for a while. So, and I I apologize to all the 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 you know the younger cats and stuff. I don't know everybody yet, but I'm learning more. And Vinny and Bear is getting me back into it, and I, I love it again. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And going back to piggybacking off of that like I used to watch this from like 99 when I was in high school like when it was you know one or two pay-per-views a year like back when you were fighting yeah. so I was watching you in pride and then of course when you come to the UFC so I, I I've been a huge fan of the sport for so long but uh it, it there is so many fights you know yeah. then it was like there's a fight every single weekend and then when we don't have a fight for one or two weeks people are like what the hell are we gonna do yeah. you know because you're so used to it but the sport just keeps growing and, and evolving so yeah and i feel like it's they don't build up fighters anymore like they used to probably because they have so many like at a, at a while they was building up the what the ultimate fighter guys but you know you guys don't get enough shine and and if, if you guys not getting a whole lot of shine i, I don't see you like i started watching uh conor mcgregor coming up and you know i become a fan of conor and stuff like that but a lot of people don't don't um, get that much shine, and I don't I don't feel like it's it's fair. But it is my fault for not like digging into it and watching all the the the, the guys that the new the newer age guys. You guys are a whole different breed, and I, I should be watching you guys because y'all doing some amazing stuff. Like your like your knockout. Did did you send that guy some flowers afterwards? <laughs> no, no, but but I did message him. You know, I, I wanted to check in on him like after the fight, but then I didn't want to bother him. You know how yeah it is. yeah so, I know yeah. So yeah. after he put out a video, just kind of thanking me for not following up and, and killing him or hurting him really bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just hit him up and yeah, we've been talking back and forth. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, you still should send him some flowers or something <laughs> though. All right, may I'll, may I'll listen to you. Yeah, yeah, send him, send, send him something. Is he married? Yep. Yeah, send his wife or something. You got kids and stuff? Uh, one on the way. Yeah, yeah. Send his wife some flowers and stuff like that. You know, get me in trouble. Well, I'm just, no. <laughs> he's gonna be all pissed. No, no, no it's just that. good yeah. karma because um, yeah. uh, I, in MMA, I've never seen anybody do that. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it was scared oh, me as true. well. You know, it was, it was, it was scared me as well if I if I knock somebody out and they, and they were shaking like that. You know, you you know, it's it's part of the, it's part of the game, and you know, what I'm saying you're a big man for not. Cause in the heat of the moment, you just don't know, right? Yeah. But you you had you had everything under control. You stopped right away. And I feel like I'm like in full control when I'm fighting. And, for real? And yeah. Like I, like I personally am. I feel like I've been doing it for a long time. I I wrestled since I was a you know young child. Through I, I've been fighting for over a decade. I've been in the UFC for eight years. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm in control. I've done it several times. A lot of just one hit one hitter quitters. You know, walk off knockouts and. At the end of the day, when when the octagon door locks, we're all trying to knock each other out. We're right. trying to 
do the same thing. All right, how, how many fights you got? Uh, I'm 19 and four as a pro. Wow, and you got a lot of amateur fights? Just two. Just me too. I only had two amateur fights before. I, I was going to go pro uh, right after I was done wrestling, but then uh, I just wanted to get kind of the feel for for fighting and just kind of see how how it felt with like the nerves. I just treat it like a big glorified spa, sparring match or like a you know a, a state wrestling match or national match. So um, yeah, just got in there, did a few, and then decided to go pro. And my first few amateur fights were tougher than my first pro fights. Oh, for real? Yeah. Right. They tried to set me up in my amateur fight, so yeah. They didn't tell you about your opponent. No, they said he was green, um, definitely not green. So my first amateur fight, I, I fought in Fremont in California, in the Bay Area, against someone from AKA. He was supposed to be. He did. He had a bunch of Muay Thai fights, and uh, Kane Velasquez was there, like for him in this corner, uh, sitting like cage side. Oh yeah. Him, John Fitch, Josh Koscheck, Phil Baroni, all these guys, and this guy's green. I'm like. You know, but then he ran into me, and that was my first knockout. Like my, I knocked him out bad. It, it was he have, twitching too. He, he was out for longer than Bryce. Like wow. it was bad. It was a bad, bad knockout. How you get all this power in your hands for a little guy? <laughs> I, I think just all the uh, man, just all the years of being an athlete. I I started um, tumbling. Like when I was a young kid, uh, my older brother. We had to pick a sport. So my mom's like, you guys pick a sport. He was older, so he, he chose Taekwondo. And then I wanted to do that as well. But uh, my mom decided we couldn't do that because we're always fighting at home. And then she's like, you guys are <laughs> going to learn how to fight, and then you're going to come home and use that at home. So I had to find something else. So I, I started doing tumbling. I was like, I don't want to do that. But then I, you know, I, I did well at it. And then I got into just playing all sports, like football, wrestling, baseball. I did it all. And then... Um, excelled at wrestling so i just kind of stuck with that and, and wrestled all the way through high school and then junior college and then at the four-year level but i've been lifting since i was little too right. so. you, you do jump squats you do a lot of jump squats yeah i used to do a, a lot of you know i used to own a crossfit gym mm. and uh yeah we did a lot of sports specific training and mm. things like that so i felt like i've always uh just had power and like at a young age i had a little six-pack from doing you know all the tumbling and stuff so my my, my son was was fighting and stuff like that, and, and um, he didn't want me to tell people the secret to knockout power. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, okay, I won't tell nobody. But now, since he, my son is full of shit now, I'm telling everybody it's jump squats. <laughs> you do jump, you do jump squats. It's, every time, every time when I was training for fights and I did jump squats, I knocked people out. But as soon as my knees got to where I couldn't do it no more, and my belly got a little bit too big, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it no more. I wasn't knocking people out. When I wasn't doing jump squats. As we look at your your UFC career, you're you know 14 and four in the UFC, um, I believe, and your your UFC featherweight you know history right now with the most knockdowns with 12, right? And then you have your ranking at, at number six. You know, Giga something happened to him, right? He had to step out, so Thug Nasty steps in. You you know obliterate him, and then you're you're obviously you're training. You don't have that much time to, to differentiate your training. You're like 10 days, right? Mm -hmm. As a guy with that much experience, the rankings, you know, the knockdown power, where you're at right now in the UFC, how do you how do you kind of look at that with the veteran experience of saying, all right, this guy's stepping in for Giga. Are you completely training camp? Are you just going with the motions? I feel like we see so much of that now in the UFC, but we don't really get a behind the scenes look at how these fighters are kind of changing up their game plan going into these big fights when they have these step in fighters. Yeah, I feel like for me, and this is just like, you know, talking on my behalf and yeah. my opinion, it's like, I've never turned a fight down and, and Joe Silva and Sean Shelby can contest to that. So I, I've, I'm easy to work with. I, I've, I've said yes to every single fight. When I have a date booked in mind, like December 16th, I was fighting um, and I was training for a world-class striker. And then of course he got injured and uh, then they, they filled... Bryce Mitchell, you know, a world-class grappler. And so they gave me a few names. Um, it was like Barboza, it was Bryce Mitchell. And I always go with like the guy with like the biggest like draw, you know, like Bryce Mitchell's the most popular. He's a talented fighter. He's in the top 10. I want someone in the top 10 because I'm already ranked six. I, I, it, does, uh, it doesn't do a whole lot for me to fight these guys behind me anyways. It's, it's high risk for really no reward. Um, but at the end of the day, I just... I had to switch a few things up and it's like I, i've been doing this for a long time so i'm like I, I don't care even though i'm training for a striker i have a different game plan and then i i go in there and gotta you know go against a grappler i just yeah. 
I, I focus on myself and I'm just, I'm, I'm going to go in there and, and just impose my will and uh, just be relentless. I, I don't care who was in front of me. I, I was going in there to, you know, put someone away and get my hand raised and just end 2023 on a high note because I had a tough year. You know, I fought for the interim title earlier this year, had another tough fight. He's fighting for the title now. And I just, dude, I, I just wanted to get back in the win column. I didn't give a damn who was in front of me. Does the giga fight still interest you? Honestly, no, you know, it, it uh, I want to get back to that title. You know, I'm, uh, that's my goal. I'll do whatever it takes to become a world champion. And, um, yeah, I want to fight someone in front of me. Like I, my, in my opinion, the clearest shot to the title, it'd be the toughest fight as well. Give me Max Holloway. He's the number one contender. Wow. You know what I mean? I think it's the right fight at the right time. And, uh, that's what I want. You know, he's a phenomenal, he was a phenomenal champion inside and outside the octagon huge name he's cleared out the entire division he's fought everyone but me let's do it why do you think that is why do you think you guys haven't crossed paths yet i don't know you know i i don't know what it is i i think a, a handful of times we they asked me to step in and, and fight him when when another fought or a fight pulled out on three week i took it you know but for whatever reason it didn't materialize so mm. you know he, he's one of the he's one of the greats when i think of the best featherweights in ufc history i think of volkanovsky max holloway and jose aldo oh wow yeah, yeah. that's a good lineup how, how did you end up at team alpha male i'm from sacramento oh wow did you grow up like training with those guys yeah so i so i'm uh i'm lucky that uriah built one of the best gyms in the world for the lighter weights um i don't, I don't think i'd be fighting if uh, if he didn't build that gym in Sacramento, I had no money to go travel and pursue this crazy dream of mine, and so yeah, he he. he I remember him coming in handing out flyers um, in 2005 while I was wrestling at Sac City College, and uh, I was like, I've always been a fan of the sport, so I'm like, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna do this um, after the season's up. So I went in there, started taking classes i was uh taking james Irvin's classes um at ultimate, i remember, I remember yeah, him yeah ultimate fitness and uh and scott smith was in there too oh, yeah, teaching yeah, yeah. and um i was like and then uriah invited me to like the pro practices um maybe a few months after he's like what are you doing in here i was like i want to fight um and, and he invited me to the practices and he's like i see a lot of potential in you and he has an eye for talent you know what i mean um all the guys that have come through the gym and people he's recruited and, and built up to world champions or number one contenders and stuff like that, title challenger, title challenger. So it was, uh, yeah, I'm just grateful that it was in, in, in Sacramento, California. I've heard great things about that gym. Um, James Irvin, um, you, you still cool with him? You still talk to him? I, I don't talk to him, but he, but he's in the area. So I know of him. I, I ran into him here and there, but I remember I used to train with him. His, his old ma manager was, was like a friend of, I was, I can't remember what happened. I don't know how we fell out. I don't think we fell out just, you know, mm -hmm. just lost um, touch, I guess. But I heard a rumor that um, James Irvin, he he won the, the first guy I started the calf kick or whatever. Oh, wow. And, um, and uh, what's his name? Forrest Griffin mm -hmm. saw him doing it and went to go train with him before he fought me. And James Irvin showed him the calf kick, the kick that actually hurt me when I fought. Yeah. Uh, and I was like... Man, you know, James, I thought we was boys. What's up, man? Why are you going to show this guy how yeah, to hurt my doing? leg? Yeah, what are you doing, bro? You don't like that kick? I hate that kick. Me too. I hate it. I hate that and the oblique kick. I hate both of those oh, kicks. There you go. Oh, yeah. The hey, don't rile him up about the oblique <laughs> kick. Oh, man. Dude, you don't I like the it. oblique kick? Man, it, it, it can end your career. The calf kick, okay, you just got to figure out a way to get around. You probably got, what you got to do? You got to step back. Gotta step back, check it, do whatever, but it's like. It's hard to check that calf kick. Yeah, but the hard. oblique kick, it's hard too. Yeah. That's it's really hard to um, check that one. I, I was trying to check it like the way you um, make people kick your knee. You know, like mm -hmm. you check a Muay Thai kick, mm -hmm. but you just got timing right. If you, if you do it wrong, you, it can end your career. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's, I, I hate those kicks, but yeah, it is what it it's is. Part of the, it's, part yeah, of it's part of the game. That's why it's the best sport. In, you know, it's, it's there, the there, there's there's a lot of shit I hate about like or, or different techniques and things, but it's like yeah, it's part of it. You know, that's what we signed up for. So yeah. every, everyone has, yeah. everyone can do it. Is striking your favorite part of MMA? Even yeah. though you're a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely striking. And, and, and you know, uh, coming from a wrestling background, it, wrestling is hard, man. Yeah. I don't want to wrestle anymore. I, I feel like a seven-minute college match is tougher than a 25-minute fight. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. 
Yeah, resting time. Too much cardio or what? Yeah, especially like the um, what you call the little flurries. You got to go through the little scrambles, mm-hmm. bro. You got to you got to do sprints. You got to be in really good shape for that that part of wrestling. Mm-hmm. What what we was talking about the 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 oil check? Did you have you how many people you, how many oils have you checked in? <laughs> be honest, we I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Like you be checking oil in wrestling? <laughs> that wasn't really my thing, but people are all about it, the oil check. But no, no, uh, don't come on. Let's I don't get a, take. I didn't get taken down in wrestling. That so was that, that was you, my like on my feet was the best, man. So I would be taking people down and, uh, you know, that that was like, I don't know, I just, I, I excelled at that. I had, I was a defensive wrestler, yeah, so I could block too, and yeah. reshoot, you know, and it, I don't want to get in those scrambles. But it's, you've it's got tiring. your fingers dirty a few times, though, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say it. You don't want to say it. Why don't you want to say <laughs> no, it? No, no. What's going on? No, we're talking about okay, the wrestling move, checking oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone that wrestles knows about that, but no. Yeah. No, I wasn't. I yeah. wasn't doing that should it. Always, that should always been yeah. illegal. Every move That's like so. his favorite thing to do, right? You? <laughs> no, hell no. What do you mean? No, but I, I remember this <laughs> one wrestler. I was always amazed in, in wrestling. People would check his oil, and he didn't even care. He was like, he wanted him to check his oil. Might have What's to give name? him an elbow real quick. I don't remember his name. He was <laughs> he not, not even it. my weight class. So he I liked rem- it. <laughs> yeah, I remember in the tournament, I think he liked it, and I, I, I don't think he was even wearing underwear up on his singlet. So I think this guy was like, check my oil, please. Damn. So you, so when it comes to wrestling and when it comes to training, like what your eye, like what's the, what's the environment like now at that gym? Is he still in there a lot? He still works with you? Like obviously he's a legend in the game and we know a lot of the controversy that went down with him and different teammates throughout the years. That gym's like one of the most iconic gyms in mixed martial arts. So kind of give me a behind the scenes of how that gym goes down now. Yeah, no, it's a, the same old stuff. Your eyes in there. He's, uh, he, he's trying to take a, more of like a, a coaching role and, uh, you know, it's his gym. So he, he's, he's kind of stuff in operations and, and teaching classes. He works with a handful of fighters. Um, he, he's always there to lend a helping hand. But me personally, I, I, I train with my boxing coach, Joey Rodriguez, Danny Castillo and Chris Holdsworth and my strength coach, um, Jay and, and Darren. So I, I just kind of do a lot of one-on-ones now. And so I can just do everything that's tailored to my fight and prepping me for my opponent instead of doing a lot of the, the pro practices that are, you know, they're great, don't get me wrong, but just, you know, they're tailored for just, just everyone, but I feel like at the the this level that I'm at and, and what I'm trying to accomplish, I need to just be. I, I train smarter, you know. I, I train smarter since I've been doing it for a long time. That's that's me. A lot a lot of people go to the classes and do a lot of things, which are, which are great. But I, I just kind of switch up my training. I've always hated the pro classes, even when I wasn't a pro. Why? Okay. I just I I just learn different. I learn different. I learn better like on a one on one setting, and so you know whenever I had like coaches, you know. Take me to the side one on one. That's where I excel. But like with when when it's like cookie cutter or or you know just tailored for a broad group of people, I just I just never liked I just never liked it. I don't know why. I have short attention span as well. Yeah, no, I can see that, and that that's exactly yeah. like it's like it's good technique, but maybe it's it's not what you're gonna do. You know what I mean? It's like so when you're doing one on ones with your coaches, it's like they, they know me so well. We've been working for so long, yeah. so it's like. You know, that's just uh, it. I think it's a lot better. How you, how you deal with uh, when your coaches try to teach you something that you know you're not going to do, or you're like, ah, oh, this don't work right for me. Do you do you still train it, or you just tell them like, nah, I don't, I don't. This is not going to work for me. No, because I'm, I'm very coachable, and I'm not one of those people that I'm not telling my coach what I'm going to do. And you know, they're watching the tape. They're they've been in the game for a long time, so I, I do try to. I try to do it just to kind of like kind of please them in a sense. But then after a while, sometimes I'll be like. Like, I'm not going to do this. Like I will never do this in a fight. <laughs> yeah. And then we kind of move on, you know, yeah. but, but I, I try it for a while. And if it, if it works well, then I'll, then I'll do it. But you know, I just, you ever have to tell you right of that? Uh, no, no. Uh, no I what does it. he do? Any uh, hands-on training with you? Any techniques, any drills? No, he, he's always there to, to do like a, like help if I need him and always like he'll, he'll hop in when I'm doing like some sparring sessions or technique and, you know, you know, give his like what he thinks I should do or what like great. He's, he's a pioneer of the sport too. Like he's, he's helped uh, pave the way for the lighter weight. So yeah, I'm, I'm always, always like I'll listen and, and, and try some stuff. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, he, you know, he's, yeah. he, he helps you, a ton. Have you ever caught yourself staring at his chin while he was trying to coach you? <laughs> No. Come on, man. No, no, I, I, I have it. Yeah. No, you want to know the MMA stuff? I want to know, you know. I know. Have, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I used to always stare at the kids' chin. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Is, is he related to John Travolta? 
I, I remember, you know, we started around about the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, rem I remember him. I've always been a big fan of his. And you guys were in a movie together too, right? Were you guys I, or no? I think I did. I think I did one movie where there was a lot of MMA fighters okay. there, but I, I don't think I was on set that day oh, okay. where everybody was there. Uh, was it Never Back Down or Never Surrender? I one think of those. So, one of those. I think I, I was, for some reason I thought you were in there too. No, no. Nah, nah, I had like a. Little, I, I think I did one of those. I had like a little small, small part in one of those movies, mm -hmm. but I don't. I never watched it. Okay. I, I don't watch a lot of movies that I've been unless. Really? No, nah, I don't like. I don't watch. I don't watch the podcast. I'm keeping it a hundred. Wow. I've I've seen one. The one with uh, Bobby Green. Cause I went to, yeah, I went to the barber barber shop and and my barber was cutting my he was gonna cut my hair and he uh -huh. was watching it oh, when I walked cool. in I said oh okay let me watch it. it was it was funny I got to the part where he said yeah and I heard these whispers I was like yeah let me watch this that's awesome so, so I, I just have a problem um, most people are like that we don't like the way our voice sound and yeah we yeah. critique ourselves a little bit too much so I, I I choose not to watch myself unless unless I I have to but I, I'm going to watch the um, one we did with Riddick Bow. Oh yeah, that oh, was a good one. We did oh, we really? did read it, but we had him in here for like two hours talking about the history of boxing, being a heavyweight yeah. champion, what it took for him to do what he did. He's trying to bully Rampage, Rampage trying to bully him. The yeah, whole he was time. trying to bully me, man. He's he <laughs> He still got it. He want to fight you. Yeah, Did yeah. You see yeah. that Riddick Bo no, just I called him out to a fight. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. He he's joking. Why, why, why do you shake your head like that? Why you do I, I I don't think he really want to fight me. Yeah, you don't want to fight that guy. That guy's a world champion. What you mean? I, I'll fuck Riddick Bowe. He was Bowe. a world champion Just, too. Leave, leave no, me to, boxing. No, I know, I know. Yeah. Oh, it's at yeah. a bo yeah, he he won. Won. boxing. No, no he you know boxers don't want to come. You know they hey, don't want to come hey, to hey, us. Hey. You know that. They don't want to fight MMA? No, hell no. Boxers <laughs> are, the, the only boxer that, that got in there and, and did it, well, James we had Tony. two. James Tony. And we had, what, Clarissa Shields? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we only had two. And she did pretty good in that sport. Yeah, she did good. But James Tony, I'm not going to lie. I respect him. We don't like each other. I like him, but he don't like me because really? one of my jokes. You know I'm silly. <laughs> he don't like me for one of my jokes. <laughs> and, but I still like him, and I respect him from coming to MMA, but they did him dirty. They they shouldn't have put him against oh, Randy Couture. Randy yeah. Couture. They should have yeah. put him against like Houston Alexander, but, but I know Houston's not a heavyweight. Someone that's going to stand there. And yeah, what's, what's, yeah, or Kimbo Slice. Yeah. That yeah. would have been a good that one. Been a good yeah, one. That, yeah, that would have that'd, that'd, that'd been a good one, right? That's crazy. Why you going to yeah. put him against Randy Couture? That yeah, because you know what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, but I'll do the same thing. Just come out and shoot a low single. You would do yeah. if you fought if you fought a boxer in MMA. You would come out and just shoot right away. Probably not. I mean, that's what <laughs> well, that's what Mighty Mouse did at Rod Tang. Kind of took him down and just. Yeah, but this this will this is what my concept. game plan would be if I'm. But you know, you got to keep in mind I come from a different because um, I. I I got you know I got my start in Pride mm -hmm. you know before UFC so I, I like to entertain the fans I, and I put my life on the line entertaining fans just the way I am so what I would do I would take them down and I would beat them up a little bit on the ground just let them know but I would I would let them up but not no not I would not let them know I'm letting them up I let them up where they got to work up tire them out mm -hmm. and that way when Tired. now they not and they, and they worried about the takedown and that makes your stand up better. So I keep faking the takedown stuff like that, and then I would I would outbox the boxer. And if he's if he's if I'm getting in trouble again, boop, take him down again. But sure. but now he's worried about the takedown, so his boxing won't be the same. Yeah, that would be my game plan if I fought a boxer. I never heard you say that before. What? I like that. No, it makes sense. I've never actually heard you explain it though. Yeah, that's 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 why you're always like. keeping gems from people. Like mm -hmm. now we have a nice guest. Now you want to kind of give away all your gems. Well, you know, I felt bad that you know saying I didn't I didn't know who he was when he knocked that dude out and and it <laughs> well, got on air. But guys, I keep it real. I love all the MMA fighters. I feel like you all, we. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of low key. You, you I, I didn't tell when I first met. He said, "Nice to finally meet you, asshole." <laughs> no, no, no. no we're good. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He whispered in my ear. He was like, "If you don't know me, you now, know me now." Yeah, motherfucker, you gonna Damn. know me now? <laughs> yeah. When the first thing he did when he walked in, he says, "Where's Rampage at?" And he just stared around the gym. I was like, "Yo, he a good dude." And then it was crazy because right when he walked in, I'm like, "I can't see him either." And then all of a sudden, I see you, and I'm like, "Oh man!" It was dark when I first walked in. No, it was just you, you're so camouflaged because normally he walks in with like five girls, and I'm like, "Yo, dude, we're gonna be here for three hours." Is the whole cheerleading team necessary? But he's like, no, I just like it. They, like, they want to hang out with me. I'm like, Rampage, five girls for one podcast? So we got a chef out here. You saw the chef? Dude, that was awesome. Thank and we you. have that, of course. That's normally for Rampage's girls. You believe that? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> you, believe, you, believe, you believe that? I doubt. I don't <laughs> what do you mean? You know it's true. What do you, you can't even say it with a straight May, face. Maybe two. Maybe two. No, at least minimum of two. One time you walked in here with a whole eye doctor office. A doctor, four girls, the girl that was supposed to get her eyes fixed. I'm like, what is going on here? You know why? You see? I'm not yeah, in line. I did. Look, that, that part look, was true. Look, you know why? They, they saw the show. They was like, oh, your co-host is so handsome. Oh, stop. And they were like, I want to come meet They're like him. 50 years old, each of them. Bro, like 50. hey, 
50 year old women, but they, they, still, nice they still got eyeballs. They was like, oh, he's, they was like, oh, he's so handsome. They all walked in with Burberry. He had brand new Burberry. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, okay, I get it. They're like the sugar mamas. He's That's got four right. of them. It all I, makes sense. I need a couple sugar mamas. I ain't gonna lie. I like, I think it's time for men <laughs> to start, you know, reaping the benefits that, that women have been reaping <laughs> right. all these years. <laughs> Give me a couple sugar mamas. <laughs> she. Uh, you're oh, married, yeah. right? Yeah. How long you been married? Uh, 11 years. Did she go to the fights? Yeah, every fight. There's uh, my wife and my my best friend. Only people that have been to all my amateur fights and and professional fights. You don't get nervous with them sitting there? No, no, I I, I don't get nervous when I fight. It's crazy. So it's like if the roles were reversed. Yeah, dude, I I don't know. I, I get nervous when my friends fight and stuff. Like I'm like moving around. My heart's like you know racing. But it's like when I fight, I'm like I don't know. Just the prep, being so prepared and. The only thing that just kind of is I'm uneasy about is just like, you don't know what's going to happen in there. You know, it's like, it's like, I'm going to floor a sports car into a tree with no seatbelt. I hope everything turns out for the best, but you have no idea. You know, you, you I'm never, serious. You've never gotten nervous for any of your fights, even your amateur fights. No, I don't get nervous. My very first amateur fight, I, I told Danny Castillo, my coach and, and, and my coach, I said, is it bad that I'm not nervous? Cause I, I didn't know. I never fought MMA and they're like, no, it's good. I was like, all right. My, 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 Worst two ass whoopings was when I didn't get nervous. Against who? Uh, um, one was, uh, one was, was it both Vanille? Uh Because the first, was the first time I fought him, yeah, both was Vanille. The, the first time I fought him, I had just fought Chuck 45 mm -hmm. minutes before. So oh. I didn't get nervous for that for the second fight. I, yeah. I, I guess, I don't know what's the science behind it, the adrenaline dump, whatever. And then the second time I fought him, I had like um, it's, it's when I became real religious, mm -hmm. and I had like a, a religious awakening, like right before, like maybe the night before, or something like the night before or the the morning of, and I went out there and I was nervous and yeah. like my two worst ass whoopings. Wow! Yes. But you know that's that's my were, that's were my, those uh, was it a tournament when you're the first time I fought him? Yeah, it was a tournament. Yeah, it the was grand, the, grand, that, the that, prior grand that's prix. That's so crazy. Yeah. Just fight multiple times like that in a night. I yeah, can't imagine. Two times, yeah. That's crazy, right? But then you 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 knocked him out in the UFC though. Yeah. Right? yeah I, I knocked him out. Yeah. I always and were you nervous for that one? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was that's one of my most nervous fights. Yeah. Okay. I was super nervous because come on, somebody kicked he yeah. kicked the shit out of me twice before that. And I was and, and everybody thought that um he had my number and that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't stand a chance. If you go back and watch that fight. The people, in the, I'm not going to say their names, but the people that sit close to the cage and stuff like that, they always upset, bro. I, that's that's one of my that's one of my prideful moments when I see how how upset they Spoil were. Spoil their plan. Oh, man. That that fight mean more to me than winning the belt. That's awesome. Because that, that was like a mental fight as well. But the thing is, I always knew I could beat Vanille. So in pride, when they had me fight Chuck first, mm -hmm. you know, um, pride, they, they hate me because I keep it real, because I tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? That tournament, they want us to. They wanted the fans to think that we like drew a lottery to pick our, our opponents, and that's, oh, really? that's not true. Yeah. So they set the tournament up for Vanille to win. That's crazy. Yeah. They they gave him like an easier fight. Wow. And and they they was they was thinking it's going to be either me or Chuck in the finals, right? Mm -hmm. So so they so they knew that whoever make it to the finals to fight. Vanley is going to be going to be tough because they knew me and Chuck was going to go at each other, and they yeah. came in my locker room and told me, "Look, we need you to represent Pride. We need you to beat the fuck out of Chuck." Damn. And I'm like, "Well, give me some extra money, motherfucker. Yeah, right? I got to yeah. fight <laughs> ice murder after the fucking Ice Man." Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is yeah, that's two great names you had to go against in one night. Dude, and, think, and they're prime. And they're prime. Yeah. Like, so so think about this: dude, if I would have won that fight uh -huh. with Vanley that night, I yeah. would have been the best fight in the world. Yeah. That night, I would. I would have went down yeah. as like the youngest champion, the best fighter in the world, bro. That's they crazy. they robbed me of that because I I told them my game plan like an idiot. I said, man, you want me to? Because I, I told them like, no, nah, I was going to take it easy on Chuck because Vanille is going to be difficult. That's what my yeah. my mindset. We didn't even train for Vanille. Really? Mm -mm. We just trained my training camp. My I don't think my honestly I don't think my coach thought I was going to get past Chuck. Wow. Mm. But I knew I was going to beat Chuck. Mm -hmm. And but. We wouldn't train for Vanley, but I knew how to beat him. I knew how to beat him, and I, I, I was going to take him down and ground and pound. Mm -hmm. I told him, like, I, I told Pride that, and if you watched the F fight, they gave me a yellow card, which is stalling. They take 10% of my my my, pay, well, they, my purse. They take your purse? They take 10% of your purse, and they take a point, I think. And, I and, and uh, 
it was like only like three or four seconds of no action. I was grinding the pound. I was setting them up for another punch, and they gave me a yellow card. And they quick. St- and it's quick, and they stood us up. And I was kind of winded. Yeah. Because those first round, 10 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I didn't know they take a percentage of your purse. I yeah. know, like, taking the point, but that's crazy. Yeah, I think I think I was like, I think I had the record for the most yellow cards. They, they even made my toy with a yellow card just to mock me. I mean, that's awesome. taking taking a piece of the purse for for a stalling like and yeah, you're in the right. middle of a yeah, fight is kind of right. nuts. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I think. That's why everybody loved Pride though. Pride had such unique rule set and such crazy mm-hmm. fan following because it was so adventurous. Like the whole fight, you were you know these guys were just going at it. And sometimes we do see a lot of stalling in the UFC. Okay. What's your thoughts on like Ilya versus Volk? Who do you think wins that? Man, I don't. I don't know. It's uh it's hard for me to predict fights just because it's uh like disrespectful I guess, but i but i can argue how both guys get it done you know it's like volk is one of the pound for pound best you know he's he continues to uh improve and like i think uh kind of prove people wrong as well you know it's it's always like the fight like oh okay he's gonna lose now but then he finally got to the point where he's earned people's respect but mm-hmm. Ilya's young he's hungry he's talented um I know he's been saying a lot of stuff like how he's going to go out there and finish him in the first round and stuff like that. And hopefully he's not overlooking him. I I, I don't think he is, you know, yeah. I think he just kind of is part of his persona, but uh, yeah, it's, man, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to bet against such a dominant champion. Do you think that Volk moving up to 155 multiple times kind of, kind of like holds up the division in a way? Do you, do you look at that mm-hmm. with a salty taste? No, no, I, I don't at all. You know, he, he was a pound for pound number one. It's like the, the guy's earned his respect. Let, let him do whatever the hell he wants to do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And he's bouncing back and forth. He's super active. Um, he's the one that was campaigning for Yair and I to fight for the interim title, you know? So yeah, I, I have no like, like yeah. bad taste in my mouth he's a yeah. good dude like seems, he's a he's a, like great, he's a great champ. great champion like and he, he's a good person as well yeah. when i was fighting uh yair in perth earlier this year he brought his, his his belt you know and he's like he's like hey you want to hold this, this is what you're fighting for he's just a he's a good dude and he comes well, what did he do he he like gave me his belt and he said this is what you're fighting for tomorrow night because i was fighting yair for the interim. Volk walked into your locker room or how did no he, he he was like he was in we were in the same uh like corner so all week we were kind of when we're staging and the ceremonial weigh-ins and you know he 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 was just sitting in front of me and he, we'd always talk you know he's a, he's a he's a good dude man that's that's that's, that's nice cool. I, mean, I wish fighters was nice like yeah. that when i was coming up uh dan henderson did that but all his teammates teabagged the belt and i kissed the belt and he didn't <laughs> fucking tell me so you know i got set up somebody gave me the belt and let me like, hey, this so was like it. for the rest of your life when you kiss that belt you know you were kissing dan's <laughs> balls is that what it feels like or like what do you, how do you like think about that in your mind visually like at night, but why, why you why you why you take it there with with that? I thought I thought we was like we was like brothers, you well, know. Well, no, I'm trying we, to explain it for our guests. <laughs> no, you know what tea bag means? The word I, tea bag? I got it. Yeah. Well, it's like when someone right. Hey, come on, man. He know he's a wrestler. He knows what tea bagging means. <laughs> no, I was just wondering. Like at night, does it ever haunt you in your mind that you when you kissed the belt, you were kissing Dan? I'm still I'm still salty. Wait, I shouldn't say that word. It was salty. I, 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 the I, taste I was salty. I'm still Set upset. Up. Uh, yeah, I'm still upset. I'm still upset about about that. And now that you know, I, I see that somebody gave you a belt, and he was a nice guy. It it makes me kind of jealous a little bit that I got set up like that. But okay, does Volk on. does Volk talk to you at all? Uh, like getting ready for fights, or you guys have a good no, friendship? No, no, not yeah. not at all. It was just like just while I was out in Australia, you know, and he, yeah, he's like I've run into him at some fights, and I would say what's up to him. He's mm-hmm. well, he's just a good person, you know. I I just treat people the way they've treat me, and. No. You think that you think that uh, um, would that affect you in the cage? Like, oh, this guy's super nice. I don't want to. I don't want to knock his head off. Bryce, Bryce is super nice too. You know. <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying he's a, he's a good guy. Did like, you know he was nice before before you did that? Same thing. Ceremonial weigh-ins. Like, we're him and his coach are right in front of us. We're just talking. You know, he's he was just telling me how. You know, he never had like a huge opportunity like this. He had to take it. And then I was telling him, thanks for taking the fight on, you know, a two week notice. And, you know, he's just, and then I saw him fight day too in the hotel and he comes up to me and he's just like, God bless you tonight, brother. I'm like, fuck, can you at least look at me kind of crazy or like, but it's, he, he's a good person. But it's like when, when I'm telling you when that octagon door locks, like yeah. we're trying to knock each other out. The he's guy trying literally to to me, I'm trying to do it comes up to you and says, God bless you tonight, moments before you have to fight? Uh, early in the morning, yeah, in the hotel, we're, we're like, we cross paths. Like, you guys then, stay at the same hotel? Yeah, they, they put us That's in New crazy. York, New York. Yeah. Why would they do that? They always do that. They always do that. Wait, and they put awkward. you at the New York, New York? Yeah, that was the host hotel for this. The Bro. fighters stay at the New York, New York when they go to Vegas? They don't put well, you at the well, win? 
<laughs> yeah, because we have uh, the T-Mobile's right there. So New York, New York here. Uh, when they fight at the Apex, they kind of sometimes they put them at uh, the Red Rock and then some other. Oh, the Red Rock. Oh, yeah, Red Rock. Red yeah, but nice. you know, bro, they get, they got to buy so many rooms. They got the the fighters and their cornermen. They got to save some. They got to cut calls somewhere. Yeah. New York is not not bad though. No, right? it was, it no, was, like, it was nice. cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I like thought that. you guys be at the win. McGregor, see no, yeah, at the right. win, baby. Yeah, was, come on, McGregor. <laughs> he probably at an Airbnb or his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a sick house. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what what's the what's the like what goes through your mental state when you're about to fight someone and you have to see him in the morning like just walk by you are you looking at him like see you tonight or like do you no. even talk to him nothing I don't care yeah, yeah. I I said yeah good luck man but you said like, you said like, it like that like no I, he just said God bless you tonight and I said thank you like I, I don't even know what I said to be honest like yeah. thinking about it but it's like I, I I don't care you know it's uh I'm gonna go in there Damn. and I'm gonna I'm gonna do just what I did you know yeah. it's like. You got to admit, it is awkward, though, to, is see awkward. Your, to see your... Yeah, I, I would rather not see my opponent, but when we're crossing paths, it's like, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to, like, mug him. I'm not going to, like, not look at him. So I just kind of look, and then how they, you know, if he if he didn't say anything, I would have just kept on walking. But if he's going out, putting his hand out to shake my hand, I'm not going to disrespect him. So, I, you know, I don't know. Hey, let's do it. Let's do a Mr. Let's do a Mr. Beast um, YouTube. We put we put him in a, in a room... <laughs> With somebody for like a thirty days, they got to stay in the room for thirty days. And at the end of the thirty days, they got to fight each other. <laughs> Mister B said, "The winner, the winner takes all the money." Who do you want to be in a room with for thirty days? And at the end of the thirty days, you got to fight him. You got to knock him. You got to try to knock him out. Hey, it doesn't matter, man. Whoever I'm gonna, fuck, I don't know. He's stone cold. Yeah, bro. yeah. Hey, he's why? why he's like emotional. <laughs> no, Are you no, still I'm, riding high off the wind? No, seems no, like no. you want to fight him right now. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what he yeah, looked yeah, at really me. Does, yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to fight him? How much? Hey, hey. How, what weight class are you? One, 145 featherweight. Man, I take shits bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I would like to know, like when you look at guys like Max, you look at guys like Volk, you know, Aldo, these are all like 145 goats, right? Mm -hmm. In your opinion, who do you think is the greatest of all time at 145? See, it's, uh, it, it's tough because Josie Aldo is, uh, I don't know you, you you think you think about him it's like all that he's done it's great but then it's it, for me it's like right now I think Volkanovski is just because he's he's beat Aldo he's beat Max three times he he was the pound for pound number one uh, I think he's like two now so it's as of right now I think he is but then it's Aldo and Max are you know they're like they're up there you know but that's just my thought process yeah no it makes sense. What about the the Yair and Ortega fight, the rematch book for Mexico City? What's your thoughts on that fight? Uh, it's going to be a good fight, you know. It was, uh, I, I think it's like, I think Ortega has some of the best jujitsu in the UFC, you know, not mm -hmm. only just the featherweight division. And then Yair so crafty and elusive, it, you know, fast. Um, so it's just depends where the where the fight goes, you know what I mean? It, it Like I said, even for that, it's hard to predict these fights, but it's like, I can tell you, like, say Ortega gets it to the ground real quick, then who I'm leaning towards, or if Yair can keep, stay on his feet and keep it, you know, keep moving and, you know, not get his back against the cage um, and just kind of pick him apart. That's It's just hard, man. Like, I can argue how how both guys get it done. You know what I, I But it's, it's so, it's like a damn coin flip, you know? You don't know. I, I sense that he don't really focus on what other fighters are doing. He focuses on, on his own shit. I can Why tell. Why is that? That's the way I was. That's the way I was, you know what I'm saying? I was a lot like that. I didn't, like, when I was fighting and, and and very active, you can ask me about any other fighter. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck he got going on. Yeah, and I, and I do, I focus on myself a lot. Like with my game plan, it's like people do these things and I'm like, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to go out there when they switch my opponent on eight day notice. I'm like, oh, you're fighting a uh, grappler now. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I, I, I can wrestle and I can grapple too. So I'm like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have the same outcome. I got to show respect for stuff like that because back in, when I was fighting all the time, like um, they switched out our opponents and it was in our contract that it had to be a lesser. Oh, really? Yeah. It had to be a, a lesser opponent, you know? I like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and like, but, but I heard you say earlier that, you know, what I'm saying you want somebody that was in the top ten, oh, yeah. so right? But, but, I, but I was thinking, I was thinking when you were saying that, I'm like, man, I gotta uh, give him respect because I remember back in the day, if some, something like that happened to me, I, I want give me a tomato can because at the end of the day, like you know, what I'm saying I, I, 
I fought for 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 a living. That's what I fought for. You know, everybody's different. Yeah. You know, I, I came to the sports. I'm a brawler. I already had mouths to feed. You know, what I'm saying I, I made some mistakes. I mean, some babies in college. You know, what, <laughs> what I'm saying. So I was like, ah, you know, I, I got some. I was a single. I was single single parent fighting in Japan all those years. I yeah, I, I had my son ever since he was three years old, and I was like fighting to you know put food on the table and mm -hmm. and save up for attorney fees because he was a crazy ass kid. I knew he was going to. Be a troublemaker. You nah, know he's a nice kid. No, no, no. My old, yeah, yeah. He day. he turned he yeah. turned out good. He's a nice I, kid. He's a nice kid. And he, and you're a good dude. He bought him a sick SS Impala for Christmas. Wow. All fully done up, new nice. paint job. It's so sick. He pulled up here on Christmas Eve. Uh -huh. I got to see it because he he gave it to his kid as a as a Christmas gift, That's and sick. I was like, wow, dude. See, like people look at him too. Not to cut you off, but I want to make this <laughs> point. People look at you and they don't realize that like you're a nice guy because you're intimidating. You come off very like you. You seem like a killer. Like I'm trying to take a, a few steps. Away from you because you could seem be a so serial cold. killer, yeah. yeah, serial could, killer for yeah. sure, for sure. serial killer your vibes. <laughs> but like you're a good dude, and you just come off that way. But that's that's why people they shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But everything you've done in your career, you've also done for your family too, which I feel like a lot of the guests we get to interview they say the same thing. But I did want to touch on that, like your son. I know you were single parent in pride. I'll let you get back to that story. Yeah, no, no, real I was talk. Appreciative though, but, of that. I yeah, watching my, you do that. My son, he did turn out to be a, a good kid, but I. I I, I thought that he was going to be like, you know, one of those kids that's going to be in and out of jail. But, you know, studies show that fathers make uh, better parents than just mothers, right? Mm -hmm. So I made sure that that he, he was going to be, a, you know, saying good. That's awesome. Good, you, know, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Kids? No, we don't. Yeah, no kids yet. Like, what's, what's going on? You don't got no swimmers? What's, what's up? <laughs> you never know. No. We, we always want to have kids like eight years ago. And then it's like we just got to the point the last few years where we actually – enjoy our life and i know I, I don't want to have kids in the next few years while i'm fighting just because it's like this is so demanding and what i'm trying to achieve and i think something would seriously have to give and that would be more towards my wife and she loves her job but we also don't want to get to the point where we're too like old oh, yeah. you know so we're, we're man how we're, old are you um 38 man you better stop she, you better. she's younger though but it, it's how, how old 37 is she? but she still super healthy but it's still but that's where we're in this this yeah. talk all time. the time you yeah, time. yeah. L listen you know? live, live your life but yeah I, i'm glad i had my kids younger you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying because because now you know say if they give me grandchildren i still be young enough to you know yeah you know enjoy enjoy them, my yeah. grandchildren and spoil them and send their ass back to them you know <laughs> but you know everybody di everybody different yeah. you know you know you but it, but it is that, that was like the plan a long time ago yeah. and then it's like just like ah, we like our like we're the only ones out of all of our friends that don't have kids we have nephews godchildren, all this stuff but you, we're like you got pets but we do we have a dog yeah we have a french bulldog that's <laughs> what's his name apollo, apollo? <laughs> that's cool that's man. a cool name yeah you train every day uh yeah pretty Seven much a week uh no, no i take sunday off when i'm in camp six days a week and then um like i haven't done anything since my fight i've just been eating and enjoying life and then uh i'll get back to yeah. training that's, that's what you that's really what you're supposed to be doing in between fights why it's, it's, it's good for the psyche you know what i'm saying you you can't we're, we're not cyborgs you know what i'm saying we are humans <laughs> you know you gotta enjoy yeah. it. like it's people don't understand how hard it is to be a fighter you gotta yeah. be very selfish so it's mm -hmm. you know you're not having kids is not a bad thing because a lot of people once they have kids and stuff like that, you, you can't be as selfish anymore, and you and you get softer. Look at uh, what's her name, Amanda Nunes. When I feel like she got soft when she when she had that kid, right? Really? Then she just get then she uh -huh. just have a kid not too long ago, yeah. And then she was all soft with the kid, bring the kid to the fight and in the cage, and then next you know she she got her ass kicked. She still won? No, she won. No, no, no. She lost one, and oh, then really? she came back though. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but she I guess she figured it out. <laughs> yeah, but did, yeah. did she not? Did she not lose to yeah, somebody? Right. And then she came back and yeah. beat him. No, right? You're right. Yeah. yeah. Pain, or it can make right. you get a little bit tougher. It like depends. You. It, it depends on. It depends. Maybe on, you have like a purpose or like, yeah, like you. Yeah. It depends on. It depends on your psyche. Like I said, you're the one that always tells me it made you a tough guy. You had to go over there and beat people up. Yeah, but it depends on your psyche. But <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I was fighting for. I was fighting for a different reason. I, I didn't finish what I was saying. Like with him, like when you were saying like you want to fight. Uh, people in the top ten and stuff like that. I understand that. You know, you you want to climb and you want to get that belt and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I, I I always wanted to be champion and stuff as well. But my my main objective was I wanted to be paid. Okay. Fuck the bullshit. Yeah. You know. What I'm no. Saying? And at the end of the day, and that's why you know I, I I do this for the money too. People ask me, it's like I do it 100 percent for the money just to kind of set you know my family up for success and stuff like that. But just me wanting to get that title as well. It's like I, I want. Yeah. Big fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. That's, yeah, that's that's yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And, and the bigger the fight, or you're getting closer to the title fight, you get more money yeah, as well. Exactly. So, do you think do you do you think people are lying when they say they don't fight for the money? 
Do you feel like some fighters are lying when they say, I don't do it for the money? Yeah, if, if some people that are just like, I just want to be the, the best. I don't I don't even care if I get paid. I'm like, like I do. Like, you know, I want to do this shit for free. Yeah, man. Yeah, there's no way. Bro, I got injuries today <laughs> that I that I got like 15 years ago. I was lifting weights today trying to do some 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 fucking chest shit. I'm like, I st- man, I'm like, man there ain't no money. You can't put no price yeah. on that. No, you're right. You yeah. you mentioned that you think this is it, like your last shot at grabbing the title. And you know, are you talking about 2024? Are you talking about this next fight? What are you talking about when you say things like that? Just the next run. You know, I yeah. just have to continue to win until I win the title. Um, I feel like it's like my last run at the title. I think I can, as far as my career goes. You know, I think I have. Uh, I, f- I feel good. I, I have, yeah. you know, years in in this sport left still. Really, I'm just making a yeah. I, I, I recovery is huge for me, so I do a lot of like. You know, I, I take care of my body. I do. I, I work on my sleep, all the recovery modalities I possibly can do. Um, do you drink? I take time off, like a little bit after fights. You know, just a little bit. But other than that, no but, drugs. But nothing. No, nothing. No weed. Nothing no, crazy. No, no. Every now and then I'll take like add a bowl of sleep and stuff like that. Well, but, you living clean. But yeah, no, no. I, I, but for the most part, I just I don't know. I, you don't mess with the snow. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Right. The snow. <laughs> the snow. Well, you living clean then. Yeah. You probably you probably got like so, I, so I feel good, and I and I got in the sport later the most. You know, so a lot of people have been in the game since they were like eighteen, early twenties. I had my first amateur fight when I was twenty six. Damn! Oh, wow. Yeah. You was old as hell because I I wanted to get my degree and I wanted to wrestle at the four year level, um, just in case fighting didn't work out. But this is all part of my plan. No wonder you knocking everybody yeah. out. You you came into the sport beating up kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So. In terms of your persona and how you are as a fighter, where does this aura, this attitude come from? Like, you really don't care who's in the ring. You're going to go in there and get the job done. Like, because I feel that from you, even as you're talking. Like, we, I'm sure the audience could feel that from you, too. You're very mellow, very calm, very chill. Like, you you really have no one spiking your emotional levels as you're getting ready for a fight, it feels like. No, it's it's work, you know? It's like, uh, I don't know, man. This is just... Uh, I don't know. This is just who, just who I am. It's like, it, it's like, I feel like I'm good at fighting. Like I have these goals set in front of me that I want to achieve. And it's like, there's nothing that's going to stop me getting there. I become like obsessed when I want something like, and I was so close to tasting gold earlier this year and it uh, pisses me off so bad. Like it, it really like bothers me. So it's like, I, I want those fights back. Uh, it just motivates me to like, I get up every day and just, just try to get a little better and a little closer to that goal. But uh, yeah, like as far as fighting, you know, it's it's like everyone has their story, you know, it's like, you know, it may have had like a, a tougher upbringing and it's like just the things I went through as like a, a kid too. It's like, I it, this doesn't bother me going into a, you know, octagon or cage to fight someone in a controlled environment. There's not a whole lot of things that scare me, you know? So it's, it's work, you know, and, and I'm going in there to, do whatever it takes to get my hand raised. And the crazy thing is I've been working with my coaches and strength coaches and uh, just trying to make my overhand right even more powerful. Hey, as an MMA fan, you have to admire that. But I do have a silly question. You know what type of person I am. I, I My mind goes all over the place. Say if you and your brother could earn $10 million each to fight each other, would you go in there and try to knock his ass out? Real talk. Like boxing, like MMA, boxing gloves, MMA, like MMA. Like you. I'd have to talk to my my little brother. You know, I just have to. Hey, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't. I, I I couldn't hurt my little brother. You know you, what I mean? You I would couldn't. take it. You you would take it easy on your little brother. It, but I, I want to knock him out. I'm, you wouldn't try to knock him out. Him. But you would fight him. You both can earn ten million dollars. We both earn ten million. He Each. he'd be up for it in a heartbeat. He'd be like, "Come on, we're doing this." So, but you wouldn't. You go out there. You wouldn't try to knock well, him out. I couldn't hit him hard like that. I don't know. See, I told you. It'd be hard. He, he, I couldn't he, do it. He's a good guy. I can tell. Yeah. He's a good guy. But when he gets in that cage, he's kind of like how, how, how I was when I was, when it's either you or me. Yeah. And it's going to be you yeah. every time. Every so. time. Like, it's like, I, I can flip a switch. Like, when I get in there, it's a, my wife knows me so well. She watches me. She knows, like, not that it's, it, it's like a joke. We have, like, alter ego. It's like, she knows when I'm pacing back and forth, like, okay, this guy, like, he's ready. Like it's, it's not, not, not who I am, but it's like, it is me. It's, it's me or him. And yeah. I'm choosing me I'm every t- single time. I'm going to tell you right you know? now, my little brother, Derek Jackson, 
If somebody offers $10 million to get in the cage and fight, I'm knocking your ugly ass out. <laughs> you going to sleep, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you, and I'm going to fucking remind you right before the fight, all that bullshit you did to me when we was kids, when mama made us clean up the motherfucking room, and you fucking snitched on me and made me clean the room up by my mother. Oh, I'm sorry. God damn, we on fucking podcast. You see what I got to do with? Hey, it works. So I, I, my brother would be, I, I'd probably knock him out. <laughs> so we're both getting $10 million. We'll, 10 million. Hey, 10 million. He got to take something. Yeah, of course. At like, night, sleep. Yeah. Or I'll just let him hit me as hard as he can and hey. It's we'll like Because you're getting 10 million I'll anyway. Yeah. And then we're out. Yeah. It's like when yeah. Adrian Brenner said, when you fight Shannon Briggs, you know, sleep, shit, sleep, shit. <laughs> he kept saying that over and over again. I'm like, what are you saying, bro? I can't hear what, sleep. I'm like, sleep? What are you saying? Sleep? He's like, yeah, he's going to go to sleep. Like, why would you say that to him? He's standing right here. He said, I was going to go to sleep? Yeah. No, see, I misunderstood. I thought he said I was going to put Shannon to sleep. No. I would have whooped his little ass <laughs> if I'd known he was talking about no. me going to sleep. Are you, you serious? You didn't read the comments? Everybody's like, how, how are you going to let, how are you going to disrespect I told Grandpa? you I don't, be, I don't be watching. I don't be, you know, if I'm talking and stuff like that, I don't, if I will watch, this is a dope podcast. Because okay. I will watch it if I wasn't doing it. I don't watch a lot of my. I like. I hate how yeah. I sound. Yeah, I a lot of people. A lot of people like do voicemail. I don't. I don't watch. Some yeah. people just be freaking out because they're like, "How's that guy going to say that to Rampage?" And I didn't like, know he was in saying the comments, that. and I'm yeah. like, "What do you want Rampage to do? Get up and beat the guy here?" Like we're all just. Hey, <laughs> well, I'm gonna say this then. I'm gonna keep it 100. I don't give a fuck if he see it. I ain't really like him. Who? <laughs> Adrian Bronner? Why not? I seen. I seen like before I met him here. Like I like uh, you. Like I didn't. I only seen that knockout and stuff. So now I like you. But I'm, you know him a, now. No, I know. Okay. Now I'm a fan of yours. So I'm gonna be watching your fights, right? But Appreciate Adrian Bronner. Before I met him, I seen him like clowning and, and doing his um, interviews and his uh, per persona. I didn't like him then when he was here and stuff like that. Just his energy and stuff. I didn't like him. <laughs> yeah, he he has a unique energy. I think he's a cool, dude. Yeah. I think he was kind of dry. I, I thought the I thought the um, the podcast was kind of dry. He acted like he didn't want to be here. Kind of dry. I thought he was. Damn. I, I thought he was kind of dry. I didn't watch it. I know you- We put, riling him up right now. No, no. I know, <laughs> hey, you're getting riled up. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, hey. I'm telling you how I really feel. I thought that, he, I thought that motherfucker was kind of dry. I was like, if you don't want to be here, motherfucker, get the fuck out. But, you know, I got to respect, I gotta respect my co-host. What would you do if he threw hands at you? i beat his little ass. I would Adrian hurt his Broner, You think if Adrian Broner threw a left check hook right, right over the top, you're going to be able to do something? Ma, I'll eat that motherfucker like a Big Mac. <laughs> Who would win, Adrian Broner or Rampage Jackson? Go Rampage. Nah, I like this MMA guy. Fighters, I like this together. guy. We, we all stick together. together. Yeah, but listen, it ain't going to be... This is what boxers keep misunderstanding. Yeah, lay it straight. Lay it straight. Boxers, they're boxers. We are fighters. We are the best fighters on this planet. You know what I'm saying? I got to respect all the fighters out Facts. there. Kickboxers, mm -hmm. boxers, uh, kung fu, karate, all this stuff. They can't fuck with us. We MMA fighters. You agree? Yeah. Yeah, in a fight. In like, a fight. But, but it's like when some of the people go into their realm where you're boxing, you're bo of course, you know, but if it's a fight, like- you know, A street fight. fight like a street. Yeah, a street fight. Yeah. Screw an MMA fight, street fight, all, everything goes like, yeah. 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 So in a street fight, you Tyson Fury, you Francis Ngannou, who wins? Francis Ngannou. A hundred percent. A hundred A hundred percent of the time, unless- yeah, uh, unless uh, uh, some yeah. weird like anything happened in the fight, it's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, I even thought in I that, that was a, I thought he won the boxing fight, you know. But he it, made it was, MMA proud. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he did really well. Like, but yeah, yeah a fight. Yeah, he kills him. Yeah, <laughs> you're passionate about Francis and Ganyu in that boxing fight. Yes, I'm. I'm passionate about any MMA fighter fighting a boxer because it's been going on a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been trying to box since I was. Uh, champion in, in in the UFC. I've been trying to get a boxing f fight. So anytime my MMA guys fighting a boxer, I'm, I'm always team MMA. And, you know, I just feel like they cowards. They call us out. And then that, that fight was called the baddest. How you the baddest and, and, and this guy coming from his sport to your sport? You know, how, how is that going to make, you know, if you win, if yeah. Tyson Fury won, how is it going to make you the baddest? How how would you guys score the fight? Well, who'd you guys think won? I'm gone. I'm gone. One hundred percent. Yeah. To go into the ring with Tyson Fury with a guy who that's his sport, that's his craft. The guy knows that science better than anyone in the world. Yeah. Considered one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, and to put him on the mat. Yeah. Come on, bro. How did he not win the fight? W will we ever see you in a boxing match? I would love to. Oh yeah. wow! It, that's one of the thing. My my boxing coach. I was so close to getting on the Ultimate Fighter a few times. I almost got into the UFC a few times, but and then. It was always win one more, win one more. And I'm beating all these guys, you know, and it was always win one more. I was like, damn, I'm never going to get in. So I was going to go kind of the boxing route and uh, go with my, you know, my box coach, Joey. We were going to go down to Mexico and I was going to try to, you know, make my pro debut in boxing. And then literally I got the the call like a, 
a month later on a five day notice. And, and so when people are talking about even going back to my fight a, a week ago, people saying, oh, we took it on short notice. I got my UFC debut in the, the Netherlands on a five day notice. I flew across the world, cut a bunch of weight, beat a tough guy. And then it's like, I fought the third ranked guy at featherweight on a, a two week notice, knocked him out, Ricardo Lamas. Um, so it's like, doesn't matter. Short yeah. notice fights. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going in there to win short notice, long notice, whatever it is. So you staying in the gym if you win in these short notice fights? Uh, that one, I, 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 I wasn't just one of them because I, uh, I was all, I was super heavy. It was the only time I ever missed weight. I was at a Kings game. I was, I was drinking and then I got a call from my manager. Hey, they want you to fight Lamas on a, you know, cause I had just fought and on a, on a, on like, it was like two and a half weeks. And I was like, oh, I want that fight because he was ranked number three in the world. I only fought one fight at featherweight because I was fighting up a weight class. And uh, I said, yeah, let's do it. So I, I had to cut a lot of weight. So How I, much weight? At the time, I was like 40 pounds over. So I, I, I cut like pounds? I cut 37 and a half pounds. In on, two weeks? On two and a half weeks. I, the only time I had ever missed weight, I, I missed by two and a half pounds. You had to give him 40%, 30% I, of your I price? set the standard, 30%. That was the first time ever, 30%. It's always twenty, and yeah. then that was the first time ever. It was thirty percent. Why? Why? Why was more? Uh, because he was he was ranked so high. He was supposed mm -hmm. to fight Aldo, and then the, the winner of that was going to go up and fight Max. But I think Edgar had got injured, so Aldo went up to fight him. And then, real talk, yeah. if I was the promoter and I gave a guy a short notice fight, and he missed weight and had to give thirty percent of his purse, I would have gave it back to him. Why? On a low key, because he he's doing me a favor, right? He's 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 doing a promotion a favor. He he take a fight in short notice, and you got to be understanding. Like you got to be a fighter to understand that. Like how much it how much it, it takes out of you to cut that weight, especially uh, short notice, and how dangerous it is on your body and stuff like that. If if you if if these promoters have ever had one MMA fight where they had to cut weight, they will understand. I would I would given it, and that was uh, that was the lightest I'd ever fought. So people were like, oh, he didn't even try. Oh, I. All, I did not feel good. It was bad. My coaches are the ones that stopped it. They're like, you're not doing anymore. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Like, but they could tell, you know, so they, they stopped the weight cut. And then usually I fight at a certain weight on fight day. I was even lighter by a few pounds and I miss weight, you know, but I, I was a shoe in for the knockout too, but obviously I miss weight. So I didn't get that, that $50,000 yeah. bonus. Cause that's when I knocked uh, Ricardo Lamas out. That was a bad one too. You know, that's same a thing. Crazy knockout. Left hook and yeah. just walked away. It's uh, the same thing. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see that. Hey, hey Vinny, show me that one. Show me that one later, please. We're gonna have to pull that up before we, we let up. you go. Um, I just gotta ask you a question. One of these uh, viral Instagram clips is a photo of you like yelling at Bryce when he's on the floor. What were you yelling at him? <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. I was just it's just raw emotion, and I feel like the people that fight like. I don't know. We so much goes into it. It's just like, dude, it, we're fighting for our lives and our livelihood. I'm fighting for you know, fighting for a check, and it's just I don't know. It just it was yeah. in the moment. Just you just, fucking, just you just growled. You just let it. Let it <laughs> I just yell. Just I, I don't know. But you weren't saying. Anything I didn't say anything yeah. to him. No, no, no. Because a lot of the like the, there's like five thousand comments on this post, and it oh, went right. viral. And it's like yeah, I didn't say what nothing. was he saying? It was just, probably before he started like uh, seizuring and stuff. Right? No, it was right after I hit him. Right after he and, hit him. Yeah. And I was just standing over him, just I, yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just raw emotion. But there was no fucking, bad blood, right? No, no, no not at all. Cool. He, like I was saying, he he's a good person, yeah. and that's what we're hundred percent. That's why people pay buy the pay per views. That's why people buy the tickets because they want to see. They want to see MMA with yeah. four ounce gloves on their feet. They want to see big knockouts. I delivered that, and then people were trying to criticize me. No, no, no. I'm like, what the fuck are you? This is why you guys pay for it. Like, <laughs> you know, bro, I didn't get it. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's the ones. It's the it's the ones that I feel like a lot of those a lot of those haters that say stuff. They be the ones that really want to be you, bro. They really jealous, bro. I'm telling you, I've learned that over the years. Those are the ones that that say stuff. Like most people cheer, but then we have this soft. Like as Americans, I don't know about you know because we had the soft side because he was shaking and stuff like that. Obviously, you did that before that, and then yeah. after, then after after that, you was like sincerely like concerned and stuff like that. So, yeah, which we saw. Yeah, so yeah. people people should just focus on that. But people always people get more comments out of negativity on mm. on social media. So that's that's what they. And that's what for. I do. I ignore yeah. that stuff now. Yeah, yeah. But I see it, and then it, it does make you. I'm like, it makes you mad, kind of. But yeah. I I, I stop yeah. doing it. Yeah. But then I'll yeah. I'll see my buddies like going in 
just going at people, you know. I'm like, right, bro, okay. some stuff you, I just can't let go. Like on Twitter, I've been like on my Twitter, man. This one dude, I tweeted something. I tweeted yeah. something last night, and this one dude said some fucked up shit, and I just had to go. I just had to put him in his place, man. <laughs> What'd you tell him? Man, I was I was out. Me, uh, me and my yeah. me and my bro Adele. He, I think he fought. He, he he's uh he's like one of the first Afghani uh, MMA fighters. We was hanging out with some um, girls from. Um, that he been on the airplane, you know, uh, stewardess, the, uh, and, and, and we was just hanging out last night in L.A. in Beverly Hills with these um, girl from Egypt, and we was talking. I'm like, "Oh, where you from?" I thought they're from Saudi. They're like, "Oh, I'm from I'm from Egypt." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee." They're like, "I was like, wait for them to say something." I'm from Memphis, and they was like, "Memphis." I'm like, "Yeah, it's named after the city in Egypt." They was like. Ain't no city in, Mem in Egypt named Memphis. I said, what you talking about? My town was named after the city. She, then they talked to each other in the language. She said, oh, yeah, the name, they changed that name a long time ago to Luxor. I'm like, that's a casino in Vegas. Vegas. What the hell are you talking about? And they was like, yeah, we changed. I said, how long ago did you change? Like 20 years, 10, 20 years? They're like, no, longer. I'm like, what, a couple hundred years? They said, yeah, maybe. So I didn't even know. They changed, wow. they changed the name. So I, I tweeted that, and then some simp. Uh, come in. Oh, looks like you ain't gonna get no Egyptian pussy tonight. <laughs> oh, so, I go on Twitter last night. It's like 11 p.m. Uh -huh. I'm like, yo, we're in Don't be late. We got Josh Emmett tomorrow. He goes, all right, cool. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, you know, I go on Twitter and I'm like, who is this guy yelling at about Egyptian? I'm like, wait, what is going on? And I'm reading all the comments, you know, like people reply. Yeah, yeah. And he's on Twitter just going back and forth with these people. He's like, I'm still going to get me some. I'm like, well, why even tweet that? Just That's send awesome. a selfie with all the girls. Call tonight. Enjoy enjoy the day. Bro, I'm tired of these uh, internet simps. Like, hard, I'm yeah. tired. They, 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 bro, they really bad. They're simps, They get bro. to you? Yeah, they get to me. The simps do. They it's get okay. to me because if like if we interviewing a girl, I had the the, the, the uh we went when Kenzie did. Yeah, when Kenzie was there, I had my shades on. So people uh -huh. saying stuff like, Oh, you know why he got those shades on so he can check out her boobs. Yeah. Like, man, I'm a man. If I'm gonna check out a girl boobs, I don't need no shades. I mean, you asked her in front of her dad when she goes to the gym. And she says, Daddy, does her dude show up or her actual dad? And so, of course, you have to and wear shades. And her dad was right here? Yeah. Her dad was sitting right there. Megathon's like one of the baddest That's dudes awesome. to ever roll on a jujitsu mat. Well, you guys Keeps know. it real. Yeah, yeah. Keeps it very real. I like come it. On, come I on, like you know, it. you guys know. I like, I, like, awesome. I like to laugh and joke around. But you still slide in girls' DMs, right? No, no, no. Honestly, I don't slide in girls' DMs. Yeah, you do. I, I promise you I don't. 100%. I promise you 100%. Then how you pull girls? Uh, the old fashioned way. In, How? In, 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 in person. I don't slide in girls' DMs. Yeah, you have to. I promise you I don't slide. How in come girls. every girl I see on Instagram, I always see a few photos liked by you? I like I like their photos. And you know what I do? Of, yeah. I like their photos. You don't know, see, you don't know nothing about this because you're married. So I like their photos Man. and I leave a, 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 what you call a GIF? A GIF? What yeah. you call it? You're a big GIF commenter. Yeah, I like those because it's cool. You know, I'm different. I like awesome. it. He always I'm, leaves a GIF of like a guy like eating a sandwich going, nom, 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 nom. and I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> no, no, I don't know what this shit be meaning, but the girls, I, he knows I, I, what it means. He knows what that means. <laughs> like if a girl, if a girl, if a girl uh, is posting awesome. something like kind of slutty, I, I had this GIF with the guy pulled down his glass. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> no, I like to do so, like yeah, funny stuff, right? I don't slide yeah. in the DMs. I'm trying to get them sliding my DMs. Yeah, but. <laughs> It's okay. I'm not going to get into how he does it, but he has a very nice strategy. He told me he calls it the full court press. So what Rampage does is he likes seven photos in a row, and on the eighth photo, he leaves a gif, and then he goes to see if the girl follows him. If she follows him, he follows her back. And then I go, oh, that's not a bad, that's not a bad strategy. So wow. like, you know, if guys are out there and so they're trying to learn- take notes. Yeah, if there are guys out there trying to learn how to slide, you, you go get an army jacket and you hit the full court press. What? So before we go, I appreciate you coming on board. Uh, for this podcast. I know you just had an amazing knockout. It seems well, like everybody's you. giving you awards. We're very excited to announce the 2023 Jackson Podcast uh, MMA Awards, which we're going to be announcing in, in another episode. And I think you might be in that list, your contender for a knockout of the year. Awesome. And uh, it's just exciting to watch you kind of come through and get a vicious knockout, very blessed knockout that everybody was healthy and safe after. But to watch you kind of take this, this title shot and kind of this road to becoming a title contender, I think that we're going to see you get that real soon if you can keep it up. You know, we were all talking about your fight and how much power. It looks like you were 50 pounds heavier than the guy. You just look so insanely, like, I would say, like, focused, shredded, ripped, you know, on point. Everybody was was pretty excited with the performance. So it's an honor to have you here and kind of chop it up a little bit and learn a little bit more about you. Your aura, 
definitely, I don't want to use the wrong word, but you're definitely <laughs> a man who goes in there and wants to get the job done. And it's not a persona, the stone cold Steve Austin vibe you got going yeah, on. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really? why I was like, hopefully this isn't a dry, a dry uh, no. podcast. No. I'm like, sometimes I'm like, fuck, I got to have a little more animation and stuff, but I, I don't know. No, just no, be yourself, me. bro. Yeah, no, just it's be just yourself. me. I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah. Yeah, but no, I appreciate. Uh, yeah, this is fun, man. Yeah. It's great to be here, and yeah, nice to officially meet you. Yeah, nice you guys know each other now. Now we know. Yeah, now we, know we now we yeah. I'm gonna follow you on Instagram. Oh, I'm, hell your, yeah. I'm your fan mm-hmm. now. Cool, thank and, you. I and I, I really like I really like this podcast because it's bringing me back closer to the sport I love, mm-hmm. and I'm getting to meet all of you guys. You know, oh, saying yeah. you guys are, are legends in the making, and you know, saying you guys are killing it. Uh, MMA is like ten times bigger than what it was when I was doing it all the time. So I think it's like, yeah, the social media and all the stuff and even a crazy story. Like it's like, like all, all, all you guys are like my, my favorite fighters growing up. Tito was like one of my all time favorite fighters. And then like, I ran into him years ago at a combate event, you know, and then just to see him like, oh man, keep killing it. I'm a big fan of you. I'm like, it's, it's kind of, it's different. You know, I was like, damn, even BJ Penn said that to me once. And yeah. I'm like, I'm a fan of you. I'm like, what? Like, you know, but it's just weird, you know? Yeah. Yeah. To, they, they watch to get that in return. Yeah. Uh, Tito, he, wa- he, he, he watches, watches MMA religiously. And I think Tito will actually make a good coach. I would like to see Tito, start a team and train a bunch of guys yeah. and see how because he he's he's really passionate about that you know and bj he he always been um really like on really on point with the sport and especially your weight class you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I watched i like to watch the bigger guys yeah but i watch some of the little guys yeah but but I, honestly, I'm gonna be honest i i thought y'all little guys didn't have power hello but you yeah. knocking motherfuckers <laughs> out cold just a little bit <laughs> yeah they have power yeah. I know you get excited about the little guys and the big guys, but I would say that the little guys definitely have power. And what we've been seeing is a lot of the knockouts of, of the night and a lot of the knockouts of the year are coming from the littler guys, not the bigger guys. Yeah, I've always been jealous of y'all little people because number <laughs> not one- Not little people. Cardio. Yeah, not yeah, little yeah. people. No. They just lightweight. Okay. I've always been jealous of you smaller guys because y'all live longer. You know that, right? Y'all live longer than big people. Did you know that? Well, I was just like like- I say longer than like NBA players and really big people. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, no, but yeah, yeah. But yeah I'm yeah. not super big. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. average. I think, I'm you, a, I think you'll be good. Oh, thank yeah. you. And, and y'all faster than <laughs> than us. Okay, I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why I'm hating on them. <laughs> you making it sound like like they're like the Munchkin kids in the Wizard no, of Oz. It's to like me, a Oompa to, Loompa. They're just they're to just me, one forty fivers. He's hey, taller than you. I'm a big motherfucker. To me, all of them. What are you six one? Yeah, I'm six one. I'm a six one. He's about six. How hold, tall hold, are you? Hold on, you, you nice. say you say what? Five seven. What? Yeah, I'm about six. You say, he's about five ten. You say you say you say, you say what? Six what? two. I'm about six. <laughs> you say you about six. You say at first you said six one. Maybe. It depends if I wear the same how, boots how, you wear. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was saying, y'all live longer, y'all faster, and y'all motherfuckers don't get tired. So I hate y'all. I hate y'all guts, and y'all little bit of motherfuckers can kiss my black ass. That's why I've been hating on y'all all these years. The oh, truth comes come out. Around, that's a wrap. Come around, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that's a wrap. <laughs> all right, you, you want to lead us out too? No, I'm looking at you. I'm still thinking about you calling this guy a little person in front of him. Uh, everyone's taller than me. You know? How, are we done? Or are, you? are we done? Yeah, we're done. And let's oh, okay. no, no, I got, no, I gotta go take a piss. <laughs> yeah, me too. Hey, listen, you that's wanna... a wrap. This guy wants to walk out. He wants to go fight people. All of a sudden, no, that's it. That's a wrap. No, I just, I, you just get mad at me because I'm telling the okay. truth. These little, these little bit of guys, <laughs> man. Not little bitty guy. He's just lightweight. <laughs> You're a little bit of motherfucker. I'm a lot smaller than him. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's just re, rename it. Just okay. The lightweight uh, what, people. What, what's your name of your weight class? Featherweight. Uh, featherweight. See, look, listen to that. How much does a feather weigh? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Jackson Podcast, we out. Thanks for watching, boys.